Hi. Fancy meeting you here in this little old place. There's a reason why I just grimaced in pain. Because I went to the dentist today. And I got a really deep filling where they had to go into the gum. So she she's sore. It, it's sore. I am waiting to eat. It's been about two hours since I was at the... No, three. Mm. I was very numb because... I don't know why. The first thing just doesn't get to me. Anyway, how are we? I'm all right. <laughs> I'm on the home stretch as far as a work goes. Woo! Nearly holidays. Holiday. 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 Okay. <clears throat> We're here this week to cover somebody. Now, I was watching Erin's live about Jessie Lee Ward. Uh, I was driving at the time when... Jesse Lee was very anti-Semitic and I was like uh and then like I did drop briefly into the clown towns live today uh which I swear I was going to cover Ray before I knew that they were <laughs> so I'm like same wavelength anyway oh paintbrush is going to drop uh yeah this one made me go like as well today because uh, for a while there I was saying you know like the prophecy I was comparing Om Shin Rikyo to Jesse Lee Ward's uh, Columbia trip and I was getting Jim Jones vibes from this one Ray 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 is uh, he's escalating and I saw that and I'm like oh Guess who's on the shit list this week? Ooh, hit list, sorry. We're not allowed to swear in the five. first five minutes. Try not to swear at all. Yeah, so I just, I really can't believe that he's predicting end times. So getting the Jonestown vibes from this one. And can we, I'm not going to watch this live. This is the live from today. Uh, God first. Link to the shirt. Well. Anyway, we are watching. Oh, hopefully I've, hopefully I've got it. I have downloaded it. Let me, let me get it. I am gonna go and put dinner on. So I've watched most of this with the clown town. Not with them. Not actually with them, because I was at work. All right. So Ray's full of shit. He is religious as hell, and. He's going to use the Bible against everyone. Uh, but I found some interesting things from Matthew. I visited, just like Ray, I visited a website. And it does say, Jesus warned that false prophets... <laughs> prophets. Jesus warned that false prophets would deceive many people in the last days. But we don't have to fall for their schemes. The Bible provides many warning signs of practical ways we can respond to false teaching. So, in Matthew 24, 11, uh, it says, oh, hang on, sorry, let me, let me start from the beginning. Uh, so, this is from a thing called David Jeremiah blog, and it is a religious like website, but uh, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, over the century since Christ's death and resurrection, Countless imposters have pretended to be the Messiah or claim to know details about the future they could not possibly know. While false prophets are nothing new, they will become increasingly prevalent and destructive in the end times. Jesus warned us about these individuals in his Olivet Discourse. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. It's him, it's him. In Matthew 10, 16 and Luke 10, 3, Jesus warned his followers about wolves who would be openly hostile to the gospel. But Matthew 7 presents a more subtle threat. Wolves disguised as sheep. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Matthew seven fifteen. These are false prophets who infiltrate the church and lead people astray. Uh, so, signs of a false prophet. 
No, he doesn't have all of these, but it's still early days. He's only been in the word for the last three months or so. False prophets may make predictions that do not come true. They may perform miraculous signs and wonders. They may claim to be Christ. They may have an unbiblical lifestyle. False prophets may deny Christ's identity. I haven't seen that at all. He's very much, you know. Uh, Trisha Paytas has this song. It's called, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I feel like Ray would really like that song right now. Uh, false prophets teaching. False prophets teaching will lead people away from the Lord. Oh, damn. Damn, that's him. All right. Let's listen. Hey, hey, hey. What is up? What's happening? Happy Sunday. Hope you're well. Hope you're... Sunday is a day of rest. What the fuck are you doing? Making it happen. I'm back home. Back home from Costa Rica. Had a blast out there. A lot of fun with the family. I shared this in the faith group that... Um, Good morning, Kimberly. Nicole, David, what's up? Aw, thank you. <laughs> Don in the house. I told the, the faith group, uh, you know, and I'll give you the, a little bit of background. Um, I uh, had a couple of dreams the last. Honestly, like this, and the clown town pointed this out. This is just so messy for what he usually is. And when I first was looking at it on clown town's live i was like this is this has got a weird vibe the vibe was just like it, it wasn't normal and it and but it wasn't like oh this is a refreshing change it was like something's going on and i don't like it last couple nights last two nights i've had some very very interesting dreams and and i realize that um i have to have more urgency on getting this word out. You know, what I've been doing is. Did you just eat a mango or something? Can we stop with the mouth noises? It's annoying. I don't know whether you realize it's happening. Like he's going to watch my video, but. Uh, oh, good luck. If you are going to make fun of me, you better have a gray wig. All right, buddy. But uh, yeah, it's just so. It's like the minimum effort, you know, and I don't know. It, are you running out of resources? Running out of Google searches you can do for Bible verses that might sound okay? I've been disciplined, right? I've been disciplined and I've been lifting, I've been lifting the weights, you know, four months in of coming to Christ and I've uh, been disciplined doing six days a week of, um, you know, lives about my walk in faith. Who asked you to do that? Not Certainly not God. And is that how God's going to ask people to serve him? Doing lives for your multi-level multi marketing coaching organization? That is just so absurdly ridiculous. You know, like, hmm, how, how can I make God's word, you know, really get out there? Oh, I'll go live every day on my fucking coaching page. So, after watching Erin B's live that she was analysing uh, Jesse Lee Ward's latest live. Uh, live, 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 live. Sorry. Uh, look at the patterns, you know, especially Ray's deliberate. Even though this isn't his usual fare, like this is not his usual way, the cadence pace, tone, it's all off. But it's on purpose. Like everything's a choice here. And he wants people to think what I'm thinking. Oh, this is different. This is a different ray. You know, uh, it's a very deliberate. And I think that that is probably the best word to describe ray. Deliberate. I've uh, been in the word every single day. But now it's, you'll see that um, I'm just being called to turn the corner and create more urgency. And 
it starts, you know, so this kind of starts like a second, um, I don't know, it starts, it starts a new direction for us. And, and I just think. That is chilly. Like I cannot, when I heard it, I like, I wanted to do Ray this week after seeing something on Julie Anderson's stories on Instagram. I can't remember what now, but I, I did send her a message and say, okay, he needs, he needs some more attention on him this week. And then hearing that this is what we need to do. Like, Oh, uh, the Jim Jones vibes are coming through and it's scary. Like, Rank makers, if you've been um and ah and about it, get the flock out of there. It's not worth what's being offered, you know. I, I just um, I'm I've just been pushed to understand that there's urgency. So there's urgency for me to get my house in order and my family in order. There's urgency to get more, you know, fruit on the vine, and meaning getting more people um, to come to God through Jesus. Through my coaching organization. That's what you mean, isn't it? Even though you haven't said it flat out, that's what you mean. Uh, disgusting. Is he the first person to exploit God to make money? Nope. But the way that he's doing it is pretty unique. You know, it does have, it does have the flavor of Scientology as well, especially because L. Ron Hubbard, his big point of view was one, don't have a, don't have a final date, you know, because what if, if it doesn't come true, then you look like a fool. Um, and two, become a religion so you can make a ton of money because of various reasons, but also the tax-free status. And, yeah, it worked really well for them. They are a very rich church and still ticking today. So that's what it means. It means having something that is lasting, which is also, again, very concerning. My tooth hurts. I'm sorry. And so you're just going to see me step it up some, and you'll see me um... – you know, anyway, then it starts, it starts today. And so, um, this is, this is titled why it's important to know Jesus today. And, and I think, you know, Hey, whether, whether you're, you know, believer, non-believer, I think you'd agree that we're in weird times, right? So, you know, it's, you know, more and more things being revealed on just how corrupt the world systems are. And, um, and I think even, even those that, you know, just blindly believed, government and media i just don't think there's very many of them left anymore i mean um they're putting up barricades around the court that donald trump is meant to be getting arrested in and or arraigned or whatever because of the control of media and politicians so i don't think that you could be more wrong especially by people on the right they are ridiculously influenced by politicians and their media, the media that they consume. Okay, it's uh, scary. Again, scary. So I was on the video that I did with Marina Worry. She used fear at every, every turn. He's doing the same thing. It's fear, fear, fear. What if, what if, what if? I'm going to put all these negatives in your mind and then probably gaslight you and say, you know, like, what did you think was going to happen? You know, things like that. And... I just don't think that he he's switched on as he thinks he is, you know, like he is in a high control group that he controls. There's not many dissenting opinions in there. So he wouldn't, if he had an opinion that was categorically, you know, can, could be disproven, it's not going to happen in rank makers because everybody thinks he's golden, you know? So he is speaking from a point of privilege as in he's got no one who's going to challenge his reality, uh, and it, which is frightening. I think I think you really have to have a stubborn brain to still believe uh, government media and, and the world systems. 
No. You have to have, I think, a weak brain because what they're showing you and what they're saying, some people are believing as the truth and it's not. That's just my opinion, though, you know. From an outside, outside of looking in, especially in uh, American politics, you know. Mm. And the only thing that makes sense, the only thing that makes sense is if um, if there's evil reasonings for what the government and the world systems are doing. I mean, it's the only thing that makes sense. What what else would be the agenda? And so we'll be uh, talking about that later. So I'm going to be digging into some biblical prophecies um, that that I hope will help. And one of the most one of the mo- most important things that I learned last night was the telling of you know in in the Bible when it talks about the end days. And I'm not going to break. This isn't the point of this one, but I'll break it down uh, this week. Is the telling of when you know Jerusalem coming back as one nation will signal a sign that we're in the end of days, and it'll be the same generation that sees the second coming, and that was in you know the reunification of Jerusalem as a nation was 1948. So how long is a generation? Is it 70 years? Is it 80 years? Well, if it's 80 years, that puts it at 2028. And so there has to be urgency because one of one of my dreams pointed out that. Um, that I was acting like I had all the time in the world and that we had all the time in the world. And that's just not, that's just not true. And so, you know, like I, when I came into Clown Towns Live today, uh, they were talking about how, you know, like something about revelations. And I said, no, he hasn't, has he? Has he really predicted end times? And he has, like he fucking has. But that is, to me, and this is not a diagnosis, but that's an insanity. But it's not. Like, because, again, it, it's it's a Ray Higdon act. And remember, he making, he's making a prediction that's not going to come true. Uh, yeah. So there's four. We've got five years, people. So, yeah. Because... When Jer- Jerusalem was reunited, well, I think you'll find that there's still quite a lot of fighting in that particular place. So I wouldn't call it reunified, you know. Um, I'm painting with my left hand. I'm not ambidextrous by any means. That's crazy. I'm painting. Uh, so at the moment, we're doing like human study in art, and we're doing realism, but. I wanted to show them how to do like, you know, how do you get the essence of a person while not being realistic? So yeah, uh, I get to, I like, I love being an art teacher. It's just so fulfilling, but I mean, the students part of it's not always great. And so, um, I know that this is a little different than normal, but let's, uh, get started. John fourteen six. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. That's that's an important verse. Look out for, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves, Matthew 7, 15. That's going to be my go-to, okay? And we're going to cover a lot of ground, you know, today verse-wise. This is, you know, majority is verses, not uh, opinion today. So I'm going to read you a verse, and I'll tell you where it's from afterwards, okay? But, um... And you just, you know, you, you tell me, right, who, who they're talking about here. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our inequities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. 
and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul, when you, when you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their inequities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul into death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So, right? Several of you are like, well, yeah, you know, that's, that's about Jesus, right? Well, that's from Isaiah 53, which was written 700 years before Jesus. So that's... But job. He wanted that to be such a big moment, but... I mean, it's the Bible is just, it's all made up. Like, so. But what does it mean, Ray? It's Old Testament there. Now, in case you're watching this and you're, you know, just not familiar, because I wasn't familiar with all these things, right? Four months ago, I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, I knew of Jesus, but I didn't know some of the, you know, the details. In Isaiah 53, again, written 700 years before Jesus in the Old Testament, you know, twice it says he did not say anything. Well, if we go to New Testament, Mark 15, 4, 5, then Pilate asked him again, saying, do you answer nothing? Seeing how many things they testify against you, but Jesus still answered nothing so that Pilate marveled. Now, in that same verse, uh, talks about him being, uh, him uh, being with other transgressors, Matthew 27, 38, then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. Mark 15, 20. Well, I got 7.15, Matthew. Uh, I know one of the robber's names. His name was Barabbas. I remember. Uh, yeah. Great, right? Thank you for retelling all those things. What does it mean? What does it mean? What's the point? What's the point? What's the point? Seven. With him, they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Now, in Isaiah 53... Nine, it says, but with the rich at his death. That sounds strange, right? Well, Matthew 27, 57 to 60. Now, when evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea, I don't know if I'm saying that right, named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in a new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock, and he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And this was a rich man from Arimathea. Romans 5, 6, 8, for when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, someone will even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, here's another verse, right? So let's, let me read this one. And you tell me, and, you know, drop a one if you are getting value from this, if you're enjoying you know, this little bit new direction and excited about talking about prophecies and, you know, and things like that. I kind of forgot I was filming a video and I was getting into my painting and I was thinking about something else. <laughs> I'm tired. And so, <clears throat> my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and I'm not silent. But you are holy and thrown in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted in you to deliver them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out, he is a worm. out the lip. They shake the head saying, he trusts in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while on my mother, the mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Be not far from me for trouble is near for there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled, encircled me. They gape at me with their mouths like a raging and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot's, a pot's herd. I don't know what that is. And my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of, of death. For dogs have surrounded me. Surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Okay. You're in that one. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far from me. O my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life, from the power of the dog. 
Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. You have answered me. I would declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard, My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and, and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord and let your heart live forever. At the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nation and shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow before him. Even he. I'm so sorry. This, like, I feel like I'm disassociating and I like, this is stupid. You're only doing like, you're just reading from something that without any analysis or insight. This is terrible. He who cannot keep himself alive. And posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born. Now he has done this. Now, this is from Psalm 22, written around 600 years before Jesus. Okay. And, and you know, it was talking about, well, uh, well, hey, you know, Psalm 22, 8, he trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let did he, did he lose his spot on the website that he's reading this directly from? Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Okay. Well, we can go to Luke 23, 35. And the people stood looking on, but even the rulers with him sneered saying, he saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Christ, the chosen of God. Luke 23, 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And Matthew seven fifteen says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Thank you. Uh, I'll be here all week. No. Uh, it hurts my... Hurt, hurts my everything. To just... I'm like, oh, he sucks. <laughs> right, they're basically rolling dice for, for his garments. In the very beginning of Psalm 22, Matthew 27, 46, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, <clears throat> I'm going to post everything here into the, into the faith group. And, you know, over this, uh, the, you know, coming days, weeks, or, you know, whatever, I'll be uh, you know, sharing some different uh, prophecies from, you know, from the Bible. Not from me, from the Bible. And there is a, uh, there's a website I found that gave me a lot of help on this. There's some inaccuracies. Uh, that I, I think they just transposed the wrong verses in some of them. Um, but um, there's, a, there's a, you know, a, lot, a lot of good information on this website. I don't have any affiliation with them, but I'll share that link in the faith group as well. And so I got two things for you, okay? Why wouldn't you share it here now? Is it because well, he would be able to, this is on Facebook, he'll be able to have an audience here? Hmm. Uh, once again, if you want to, no, what, what are you talking about, Tish? I'm tired, my tooth is sore, I'm hungry, and Ray's crapping on. Sorry, also I did make it faster, if you're not looking at the screen. And suddenly it became faster. I made it faster because I'm like, shut up. I don't care about your damn costume. Costume. Your message. No. What am I even talking about? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Let's just get through this. And if you're, if you're on here and you're like, you know, wait a minute. You're saying that six and seven hundred years prior to Jesus, they were saying specific things that ended up happening to Jesus then, hey, maybe Jesus is real. Maybe God is real. And listen, if you're on here and you're, you know, whatever, no judgment, no shame, you know, um, if you're an atheist, if you're, if you're whatever, um, if your life isn't going the way that you wish it was, if you grew up and had different trauma, different abuse, different things that you went through, and you find yourself constantly searching and hungry and seeking, if you find yourself looking to fill some kind of hole in you, and no matter what you do, it just doesn't get filled. Like for me, um, it's been a lot of things over the years, a lot of things, um, you know, um, Popularity, right? In high school, like I really strive for that. Um, drugs at one point. Um, success, climbing the ladder, success, recognition, money, all those things. You know, at one point it was sex. You know, after I went through a divorce and before I, you know, committed to jazz, it was sex that I, um, you know, tried filling these holes in my soul with. Uh, then it was meditation. Then it was fill in the blank. I tried all kinds of different things. So I, I'm just going to make a suggestion. It's just a suggestion. And that is if your life isn't going the way that you wish it was. If, if you have been constantly seeking and hungry and thirsty and you just haven't found sustenance, you haven't found that thing that has helped you feel any better, maybe, just maybe, give Jesus a cry. Give Jesus a try and a cry. Really? Like this hasn't been said before by a thousand other people, but you think you're the prophet. So you think, oh, yeah, they'll, it, they'll get my message. It's not true. Like, this is, I don't know. It seems desperate because, well, it is desperate. So that's why it seems like that. 
And so there's there's several ways I've, I've heard people say this, and this will really be my first time, but not my last time of sharing this. And that is, I, I wrote down, I'll share this in a faith group, but you know, just confessing, confessing with your heart and, and asking Jesus to come into your life. And so what that could look like is... So the other thing I was reading about with Jim Jones is um, how they couldn't trust each other. They'd dub each other in for infractions when they were in Jonestown. So I was like, you'd get in trouble if you, you know, said something negative or something like that. And uh, that reminded me of sort of Ray in that I bet you he does make them all dub each other in. They all like confess to him and he's modeling that behavior, you know, I hadn't heard him talk about uh, drugs and sex, but hmm, interesting. And he's been hitting trauma a lot lately. So I'm thinking that he m may be going through therapy. Let's hope so, because friggin' hell. Is, Dear Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and ask for your forgiveness. I know that you died for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. And so I'll, I wrote this out. I'll share it in, in the faith group, which if you're not in that faith group, it's hickengroup.com forward slash faith, hickengroup.com forward slash faith. And then I have a prayer for myself and, and everyone else on here. And, and again, this, these are, you know, this is something you could say afterwards. Uh, I'll post it immediately in the faith group and then I'll um, you know, hop off to, to church here. Father, we come to you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, thank you for filling me. Jesus, I know you are the vine and I am the branch and your Father owns the vineyard. Thank you for guiding me with the wisdom to bear much fruit and bring more and more people to the kingdom. Guide us in these turbulent days. Help us to do your will. Please light my path and the path of all those who are seeking to you and see your hand guiding the entire process. Thank you, Father, for listening and your love and your healing. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise you. Amen. And so I hope this is helpful. Yeah. I want to see if he ripped that off. Again, guiding the entire process. Thank you, Father, for listening. So. Uh... I can't see it anywhere, so it might be an original prayer, but I was just a bit sus on it. Doesn't mean that he hasn't taken it from somewhere, but I can't see I can't see it online. Guide us in these turbulent days. Help us to do your will. Please light my path and the path of all those who are seeking to you and see your hand guiding the entire process. Thank you, Father, for listening and your love and your healing. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise you. Amen. And so I hope this is helpful. Feel free to share this with someone. Feel free to tag somebody if they if they could, you know benefit from this. And if you're on here and you're just not sure, listen, four months ago, I wasn't sure. Four months ago, I, you know, I didn't understand, well, why do you have to die? Well, well how come sins? Well, how come God lets bad things happen? Well, uh, how come, how could God let that guy get elected? Right? <laughs> you know, I had all these, you know, justifications, all these, you know, ways in which I would do things if I was in charge. And just like you can't understand the things going on in the world, you also can't understand why he would send his son to be crucified for our sins when we didn't deserve it. Right? So in your, in your, Ever uh, push to, you know, to shake your fist at God and say, how come these things are happening? Wrap your mind around why would he send his son to be crucified too, right? And so we need to lean not on our own understanding, okay? And know that we are in weird times right now. And and I really believe it's time for us to be more urgent in, in talking to the hungry, talking to the thirsty, talking to those that are that are seeking, and those that are not seeking, they don't have eyes to see. They don't have ears to hear anyway. Can you just leave people who are struggling alone? Because uh, that's enough. Uh, God can't do anything for them except uh, for, you know, toxic positivity. Because the reason for Christianity is to make you accept your shitty life now because you'll be into you'll get into heaven when you die. So it's okay if your life is shit because you'll go to the kingdom of heaven. Uh and it's a way it, at the heart of it is capitalism. So it's okay that you toil and work and you don't have any money as long as you're Christian because then it you'll get those rewards in the afterlife. I'll just keep my rewards to now. Can I have my, I'll have my rewards now. Thank you. Right. So keep doing your thing. Keep showing up. Don't let them harm you. And, you know, when I was in Costa Rica, I believe the number one reason that I was in Costa Rica was to equip and weaponize and inspire my new friend, Willie. And, you know, for Willie, who has an amazing, amazing story from, you know, atheist to, you know, just, you know, amazing, amazing believer and just full of light and energy. Um, <clears throat> I forget where I was going there. But, you know, I just believe that you know, my purpose was to hear some of what he was saying of getting his family in order, getting his house in order, and, and also to, you know, help inspire him to start sharing his story more. And, and for those that, that didn't hear that, you know, story, I interviewed him on Friday and it's on my uh, Facebook profile. It's on my Facebook page, I believe as well. 
And uh, it's also in the faith group. So if you're not in the faith group, you can join. It's free. HigdonGroup.com forward slash faith. But if you have, if you know someone who's tried a lot of things, I tried a lot of things. I was very new age. I mean, I had crystals and I had, med- I was meditating every day and I was, you know, and there's the only interesting thing about meditation is nine times out of 10, my intention of the meditation was to connect to God, but I didn't really even know what that meant. <laughs> that was just my intention. Cause I thought that that, that just seemed to make the most sense for me to seek. And, and so, you know, tag someone, if you know someone that's thirsty, hungry, seeking, tag them in this message, maybe just maybe this is, you know, what, what pushes them forward to, to learn more and to seek more and to be hungry and thirsty. Now that would be a miracle that the reason why you came to God, Ray Higdon, I don't think you're going on God's magic list. All right. If that's how it happened, it's just. And when he said, you know, oh, I was meant to go to Costa Rica to meet this guy, blah, blah, blah. And he said, um, what did he say? He said something that alarmed me, like prophesize or something like that, you know, and to be near him and, you know, look at how we can fulfill our goals together. And it's like, and what, what are, what are the goals? Because that's the most concerning thing. And so I appreciate you so very much. Again, I'll share it all in the, in the faith group. Thank you for listening. We got work to do. We got work to do. And, and I don't know how much time we have to do it. Um, so I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to be a good disciple and learn as much as I can and share with you as much as I can. And I appreciate you so very much. Happy Sunday. All right. Bye. You guys. Well, that was terrible. How disgusting. I am disgusted. I, I would like to say I can't believe it, but I can. I can believe it. I can absolutely believe it. Uh, you know, you, you can just look at someone like, uh, uh, what's that guy's name? His name. And he turned people away from the church during the flood. God damn it, I can't remember his name. Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. Evil. Absolutely evil. You know, you look at the way that Ray has changed is insane. This Ray, talking here, is not the same Ray as it used to be. Like, with the annoying, uh, uh, you know, like, full of crap. Yeah, he was. But this is a whole new level. It's a whole different level, and it's a lot more dangerous because... It's not just him. He's leading people in this. And go follow it. You know, not everyone. So hello uh, to anyone like who's lurking. We, we need to make sure that this doesn't escalate. Because like I said, it starts here. And it's people just sitting around, uh, you know, like shooting shit and talking. But where it ends up is in trouble usually you know a mass suicide at Jonestown or a mass suicide in a mansion in a, a failed a gas attack in their minds or whatever I don't know <laughs> yeah so very concerning please stay away from Ray, Ray Higdon and uh, if anyone is contemplating leaving you know or contemplating thinking about it you know thinking is it's not illegal. You can think about it. And, yeah, just keep keep your eyes open. Yeah. Otherwise, that guy is walking towards Michael Company Canada. Hooray! And I will see you next time. And I am going to do another Ray video. And then we've got a roast on blah, 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 Sunday. Sunday Australian time, Saturday US time. Not sure of the exact times at the moment, but I will let you know. All right. Uh, love y'all. Give me love y'all. Good night. Good night, man. Good night. Good night. Oh, the dogs. Dogs think something's wrong. It's not. Mm-hmm.